assessment of all of this. So now he's going to move uh, to the highway. See, his experience with the independent man caused him to consider the importance of friendship and the value of people doing things together. That's the way he's moving here. He says, two is better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. If they, and if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. Again, if two lie together, they have heat. How can one be warm alone? I'd like to talk to you, just to change of pace, about the golden plover. We're, we're really not changing the subject, but we're going to change the pace. The golden plover is a little tiny bird. weighs about 130 grams. And what it does every year, it flies from Alaska to Hawaii. And this chart shows you the flight time. On the left is the weight of the bird. And on the right is the fuel consumption. Now, the fuel consumption, it, it weighs 130 grams normally. But in, in anticipation of its flight from Alaska to Hawaii, uh, it gains weight. It actually picks up 70 grams. And as it flies, it consumes energy. And we have the equation for the energy it consumes. It turns out that if he, fly, if he gains 70 grams, which is what he can gain, and he can't get less than 130, that's his, his, his raw weight, um, if you do the calculations at the fuel consumption, you discover this problem is he has an 88-hour flight to Hawaii, and he only has enough fuel to fly for 72 hours. There are no islands between Alaska and Hawaii. There are many mysteries. Is how does he navigate so, so precisely? And those are still mysteries. There are all kinds of conjectures, but they're still really mysteries. But the real problem is that if you do an analysis, he can't make it. He can only, by raising the, adding 70 grams to his weight, he can only fly for 72 hours, and he's got an 88-hour flight in front of him. A quarter of a million wing flaps. They've, they've analyzed all this. But he makes it to Hawaii. The question is, how does he make it to Hawaii? He mathematically can't. You know how he does it? He flies in formation. Do you ever realize that that's why birds fly in V's? Is that they do the same thing a race driver does around a track. A race driver calls it drafting. Because if you're in the wake of the guy in front of you, you're going to use less energy, and you can use that to slingshot yourself around him if you know how to do it. Well, the birds do that in flight too. It turns out by flying in formation, he can extend his 72 hours to 88 hours and make Hawaii. In fact, he has 6.8 grams in reserve for headwinds. Now, I was going through all this. I came across it from some writings of Werner Gitt and the analysis. I was very intrigued with this one morning because I do most of my work very early. I get up early in the morning, do it early. So I'm usually through with most of my key work by the time breakfast comes. So Nan gets up about 7. We usually have breakfast 7.30, 8. So I come down all excited about these numbers. See, isn't this interesting about this little tiny bird? And look, out, and I, go, I, go through, I go through all of this. She looked at me, and her immediate response was, gee, that just proves you can't make it by yourself. I thought, wow, isn't that just like my wife? You see, I have all the interesting little details and missed the whole point, you see. But she look, cuts right through that. She says, what this is saying is that you can't go it alone. The plover, the golden plover, could not get from where it has to go for winter by itself. So it goes in a group, and they rotate the lead. And he picks up a 22% improvement in fuel consumption, which turns in this case to be essential. And I thought I just thought that's kind of interesting. Just share that with you. You never know what's going to come up in a Chuck Missler Bible study. Two, better than one, if you're just, just going through life, it's also in terms of protection. If one prevail against them, two shall withstand them. That's assuming they're under attack. And here's this famous line, often quoted from Ecclesiastes, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. And again, the, the idea of threefold cord has more strength, but there's even a deeper thought here. This is often quoted with respect to marriage. Your marriage will last if it's a threefold cord. You, your spouse, and the Lord. It's a trilogy. It's going to succeed. And how precious that truth is. Anyway, it continues, better is a poor and wise child than an old and foolish king who will no more be admonished. Solomon seems to introduce here a story. He's, he's shifting, uh, verse 13, to the palace. And uh, he's sort of uh, introducing a story that has two truths, the instability of political power and the fickleness of popularity. Better is a poor and wise child than an old foolish king who will no more be admonished. For out of prison he cometh to reign. Now there's a child apparently gets out of prison. For some reason he ends up, uh, whereas he that is born in a 